death be not proud. What's up, you ignorant subhumanoid pigs? Holy Diver here, and today we are going to be painting some ACW by Warlord Games epic scale miniatures. And these things are really kick ass. And what's even more kick ass about these things is the amount of colors that we have to use. All right, so let's get today's shopping list assembled. Today you will need Codex Gray. Necromancer Cloak. From the Citadel Range, Zandri Dust. Reaper Rosy Shadow. Vallejo Leather Brown. Charred Brown from Game Color or Scorched Brown. Prussian Blue. Chainmail Silver. And Strong Tone Ink. How many is that? How many is that? It's four. It's five. That is nine colors. Let's get this guy back over here. Uh, this guy has been primed with Panzer Gray and misted with Uniform Gray. And uh, the first time I did these guys, I primed them black and then I dry brushed them Codex gray with a brush like this, a big old hubba dubba dar like that, and I just went bop, 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 bop. that clogged a little bit of my details. Uh, you can still do it that way, it doesn't matter, you know. I mean, I, I was going like this to the brush and everything, I was like, get that stuff off there, you know, and then I would attack with a dry brush. But they're so small, you can't really use something like this on the miniature because the face is can clog very very easily so that's something you, you've got to watch out for so with the shopping list out of the way god how many times are going to knock these guys over i just want them up and out of my way with the shopping list over we're going to start with our first color and that is zandri dust and we'll be right back well all right i wanted to uh do the zandri dust kind of just off off the screen real quick and uh, while I was doing that I did the brown on the bases as you can see now this is a done this one's a done deal and uh, I it doesn't matter what combination of pants you choose for colors like you can see that four five of them in this unit have them and they're a little bit closer together the butternut color and the uh, and then five of them have that color pants and they're just not together and if I wanted to, I could make one pair of pants blue, but I might just keep all these guys gray for the purposes of time because it doesn't really matter how you do it. But the first thing I always pick out is a couple of hats. I pick out a couple of hats in the Zandri dust. And uh, let's get this back up here. As you can see, some of those guys have Zandri dust hats. But I always pick out the uh, blankets that these guys are carrying around, these mats that they... Uh, these big huge blankets that they're always carrying around. I always pick those out and uh, That's the first step I do and then I always paint the uh, bottom of the base brown So you don't need to see that so much But I just wanted to show you that it doesn't really matter and if I want to I, I will have to use Prussian blue because if you get up real kind of close to them You can see that they have a cuff a cuff next to their hands and I painted all the cuffs so our next color in the setup is going to be we are going to paint the faces and then we're going to do shadow cloak for the leather straps the boots and uh, what do you call it the facial hair I don't know why warlord games gave these guys facial hair but it, it, it's a it's one of life's great mysteries and you always start with the flesh first and uh, this is built up over gray and Starting with the flesh first, you want to work from your inside out because the beards are outside. Again, I do not know why they wasted their time giving these people facial hair. It's a shitty design flaw. I really have to ding them for this. But let's get started here. So we're going to get some of that. And we're really good at just going to attack the faces that don't have facial hair. We're going to attack some of the hands that we can see. And we're just going to kind of go for it. 
And if we get too much in an area, we can always swipe back over from where we started just in case. But yeah, we're going to get the faces of these guys done and everything. And we're going to do the hands. The little hand, these guys got little handy hands. But yeah, you just want to kind of start from the inside out. Just like I'm doing there. But uh, I'm actually really excited. I might do uh, two boxes of Union and three boxes of Confederate. Make Confederate my uh, main army. Because I'm a fan of the Confederacy. They had the best generals. Robert E. Lee was a genius. So was Nathan Bedford Forrest. I just finished a book on Nathan Bedford Forrest by Samuel Mitchum. Who wrote a bunch of books about Rommel. And uh, the name of the book is Bust Hell Wide Open. I suggest you pick it up. That guy, uh, that guy Nathan, he was like Luke Skywalker. He, the thing that I really like about Nathan is that he was not a West Pointer. He was a merchant. Uh, he was also a slave trader. He kind of did whatever he could for money. And uh, when the war started, he started as a private. And some people around him recognized his natural talent for warfare. A lot like Oliver Cromwell. He wasn't a professional soldier. He learned on the job. Very few people just have a, a knack for violence. And Nathan is definitely one of those people. A lot like Audi Murphy or Sergeant York. As a, as a matter of fact, not being a West Pointer, we're going to compare Nathan Bedford Forrest to Daniel Boone. And by this time frame, you also had relatives of Daniel Boone serving under Nathan. So, you know, he, he's kind of like a, a Davy Crockett in, in a lot of ways. Very interesting read. Very interesting guy. Um, another book I'm going to read is probably one on Sherman. I also bought the complete comprehensive history of the Civil War, which is uh, done by... James McPherson, and uh, I've only gotten time to read the first three chapters of that, and it kind of deals with uh, the time frame of the Mexican War and how the compromise of uh, the mid-1850s was going to bring us to war anyway. Uh, I think Samuel Mitchum also wrote a book. I don't know if he wrote it. Uh, it wasn't about slavery. I want to look at I want to take a look at that one but the more I read the less time I have to do this shit less time I have to sit down and do this stuff if you get too much in there just wipe it off your brush and make sure you dig it in hard there you go and it won't matter these guys are so small I mean, if you don't want to paint the beards, that's fine. I don't blame you. I don't fault you. I think it's completely stupid that some of these guys are sporting facial hair on a scale this small. I mean, I can understand if it's a very hard, pewter feature and you can actually pick it out. There we go. But I have my first regiment done. You get a hundred guys per regiment, that's five bases of guys, and uh, you can probably have two brigades, maybe three brigades on the table for each side, and uh, you've got, you only need a four by four table for that. And so this is kind of an ingenious move on Warlord's part to get people interested. But, you know, with the way people are all sensitive, oh, the South is racist, ah, the Confederate flag is racist, ah, nobody wants to play the slavers, ah, bleep off, just grow a set, grow a set, dude. It happened, it happened, there you go, slavery in America happened, get over it. I would gladly pay reparations to anyone who was a slave. So if there's anyone out there who's 185 years old, step forward. Oh, wait, everybody's dead. So fuck, so bleep off, it didn't happen to you, all right? And uh, I, I don't know. You can't even study things anymore. You can't read anything. If you read the wrong book, you're racist. Oh, you know, I mean, look at where, where we're going. So I enjoyed it. 
the, the book on Forrest. I might read another one on him. That, there were some sources that he used. And uh, I might also pick up Samuel Mitchum's The Desert Fox. So let's move on to Necromancer Cloak. This is boots, leather straps, and facial hair. And a couple of the hats are going to... Um, a couple of the hats are going to be painted the Necromancer Cloak color as well. Because the uh, Johnny Reb was known for being a bit ragtag. Let's see here. I'm gonna get a couple drops of that. I'm gonna thin it out real good. We're already two colors through our uh, nine that we're going to use. Xandry dust, we might just keep that handy. And then let's see here. Let's deliver a little bit of water to that. Boom, boom, boom. boom. And uh, like I said, you wanna work your way from the inside out. We're gonna take a smaller paintbrush which I did not clean off last night. That's great. That's okay. It was just a little bit of metallic. All right. And uh, we're going to go for the straps on the shoulder that we can see. Oh no, it's racism, it's all racism, what are we going to do? Holy Diver's going to play the South, I knew it, I knew it, he, he, he's a white supremacist everyone, ah, he put the flags on his miniatures, you know, and, and the problem I have with a lot of this, uh, being a scholar, being somebody who has a legit useless degree in history, um, is that everybody is guilt, a lot of people these days are guilty of what I call it, presentit, presentism, but I like to call it futurism. That's where you take the standards of today and you judge somebody based on the standards of today. And, you know, I really think that makes you look like an ignorant, dumb motherfucker. And I mean that in the worst possible way. You, you, uh, you think with your feelings. That, and that's the problem. You got too many people thinking about history with their Feelings. <laughs> so let's get this done. And you can't even have a discussion anymore. You know, that's, you know, so. I'll gladly play the South and I just don't give a flying flip. There you go. Let's see here. And we're also doing, uh, up front, you don't have a lot of uh, leather straps that you'll see. They're all in back with the belts and everything. But I do paint the belt buckles this color. I do go down low. And uh, let's deliver just a little bit of uh, water, dirty water, to my flesh tone here. because we might get a little bit on the hands. And you really are working from your from the inside out on these guys. I also paint the ammo purses this color as well. That's the front. Yeah, these uh, right here. Ammo purses, get this color. The rest of the strap. And this is the annoying part of the model, is doing the strap and the belt. And then I'd use a different leather brown for the accoutrements, such as the canteens. And if I have to re-highlight with gray, that's fine. I'm not really worried about the details at this point. You're just kind of working out the kinks. Oh no, it's racism. Ah. I, 
I mean, I remember growing up uh, north and south, that old TV, I, I think it was a TV show or a series of movies, that was on all the time. Not to mention, if you read some of the Sergeant Rock comic books, Civil War stories were little short one-offs in that all the time. Sometimes they focused around a Confederate guy, sometimes they focused around a Union guy. And that's a superhero they need to bring back. I think they need to bring back Sergeant Rock now more than ever. And instead of having him fight Nazis, put him in the desert fighting Muslims. Put him in the desert. Or put him in the desert, or put him in Japan. Put him in the, Jap in the, Japanese, in the Pacific front. That would be pretty good. I, I would read that if you uh, took him out of Europe. Get him out of Europe once and for all, you know. Let it die, let, because the whole Nazi thing has been done to death. Just let it die. I'm so sick and tired of, oh, Wonder Woman's going to come out of the wood, woodwork and she's going to fight the Nazis. Everybody's always fighting the Nazis. Uh, I say take Sergeant Rock out of the, of the uh, European theater and put him in the Middle East killing Muslims. I, I think that would be, because we need something like that. You know, you used to be able to demonize your enemy, but now you can't even do that anymore because that's racism. Ah, everything's racist when it comes to military or history these days. Almost not. There we go. Right here, ammo purse, strap, ammo purse, and there we go. All right, so we got that done. We also do the back of the heads with this color as well. Sometimes you can't even see whether or not these guys are coming and going. So little. And, you know, and for the Union, I'm going to make all their hair brown instead of black because it will probably read a little bit better because they had those dark, dark blue coats. And a lot of times the Confederacy would catch them and they're so blue you can't do anything except dye them black. There we go. Did we get it? Yep, we got it. Bam. All right. So we're almost done with Necromancer Cloak, and we're going to change brushes a lot on these guys. Again, we want to kind of keep that really wet in case we have to come back to using it. But me, I for one think that the uh, Civil War era for America is very, very interesting. Where the roots of our revolution would be rooted in the English Civil War we would finally become a country. The only problem I have with uh, the Civil War is that any kind of loopholes that you could use to succeed, secede from the Union have been closed up by that. So, you know, I mean, it's like, I'm just sitting here kind of waiting. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna say that living in the 90s, things were a lot better off back then. We were way better off in the 90s because we still were a nation of people back then, you know? I, and you, and the only and you only ever had to watch professional wrestling to know that we were a country back then especially in the 80s and everything we're just going to get the feet of these guys Do all the boots up. Let 
The reason why you want to start with that brown because it's going to get everywhere. You will touch, no matter how careful you are, you will touch the parent waves, which is okay. But you don't want to paint too much of the the brown with this gray with this uh, shadow gray color. And you know the union is they're going to be they're going to be a little harder to paint, I think, because. Gosh, they're gonna be dark, and I'm glad I'm not. I, I'm glad I didn't choose them. They would be too dark for my tastes. Just that deep blue with black straps, and I'm gonna have to use physically black straps because there'll be no way to differentiate. And uh, I might have to put a little line of Codex Gray on them. Yeah, that's gonna be annoying. But I'm gonna go through each tutorial on these uh, epic scales. as best I can. Okay, let's finish off the faces. This guy's got a mustache. Yeah, we're using a big brush. We're getting bold. This guy's got a beard and a mustache. This guy's got a beard and a mustache. Oh no, Holy Diver's gonna play the slavers. He's a racist. Ah. Oh my god. And uh, there's actually a store owner in my in my local area, not too far from me, who isn't gonna carry this stuff because the Confederate flag, uh, the Confederate flag is on the cover of the box. There you go. That's that's what a that that's the kind of generation we're dealing with when it comes to people like my age or younger. Just a bunch of woke, sensitive pussies. I mean, and uh, who who is uh, Ice T? He had a song that he uh, did a cover by Suicidal Tendencies, and it was called uh, "Institutionalized." And he literally said it was about the pussification of American men, the pussification of American men, and how they're trying to turn every man out there to, into a woke, sensitive faggot. And, and it's really not good for the country, because at the end of the day, you feminize the men. Uh, what are we going to do? Send pregnant girls to fight our wars? Last time I checked, women in the military get pregnant so they don't have to go out on deployment. Oh, I'm pregnant. I don't have to go. I can shirk all of my duties. Tee hee hee. Which I think if you ask me for, you know, if you get pregnant... And uh, you're in the military, and you willfully do that before your contract is up. They should just DD to uh, DD two fourteen your ass, dishonorably discharge you, because it's just too expensive to pay for it. You know how much money we'd save if we weren't paying for a bunch of people to get pregnant while they were on duty. Because it's not like you're gonna fight anyway, but we still have to pay you. Mm, yeah. I still gotta float the bill for that shit? Thank you. Thank you, Uncle Sam. Alright, so we did all the facial hair that we could. And then uh, we're just gonna kinda go through and we're gonna touch up the flesh real quick. This is where we look for hands and stuff. Not to mention they instituted uh, that new PT test, the ACFT or something like that. And uh, it's supposed to be a gender blind PT test. And the women, 84% of them, still fail the PT test. So what, what, what do we do now? Oh, we lower the standards yet again. 
And uh, if you really want some insight on this, I'll, I'll try to get the ranger to do some, uh, I'll, I'll try to get him to do a video on it. Because he knows more about that stuff than me, women in the military being a guy who was in special forces and everything. You know, and just how it's embarrassing, to say the least. That's, that's the best way I can describe it. There we go. So the flesh and the... And all that's done. The flesh and the leather straps, the boots, the back of the heads. I want to keep that kind of wet. Just in case. I'm going to keep that kind of wet. Oh no, I got flesh color into my paint. Oh no. The next color we're going to use is Prussian blue. We're going to do a couple of these guys with blue pants. Maybe one of them. But we're going to do all the cuffs for these guys with the blue. But I really, I, I do really like the fact that I have to use less than 10 colors just for the initial painting of the uh, sprue here. You know, that's a good color palette. You know, I, I think my orcs, let's see here. I gotta use Warboss Green, Law Flesh, War Boss Green and Moot Green and Thraka Green. There's four colors just for the skin there. Then I've got to use uh, black highlighted with Necromancer Cloak. So, or it depends on what colors I want to make their pants. You know, it goes on and on. Then I've got to give them certain colors. I've got to give them highlights. Oh, God. I am not looking forward to painting my Mega Knobs once I start getting... Once I start going on that project, that is not going to be fun. I'm going to go around the cuff. And this only takes a second, but it looks good. And this is where you can watch and make sure that you get clean lines on your hands on your handy hands here. So, you want your hands to kind of stick out. They're a very prominent feature. But if you're beginning in the hobby, I highly recommend watching some tutorials and learning how to paint on these smaller figures and uh, putting an army out as fast as you can. Do it as fast as you can. Learn how to dry brush. Learn how to use your detail brush. Learn how to thin down your paint. Uh, you can learn all the basics on these relatively quickly and you don't have to worry about the color palette as much. And then I think once you paint three or four boxes of these guys, you can move on to a full 28 millimeter project or even do a Flames of War army. Now I myself am not really into Flames of War just one more game that I don't, I don't have time for or don't have the will to do. It's not my fault, it's just how I roll. And as you work your way through, touch up the hands where need be with a bigger brush so that those hands are very prominent. Prominent hands. I might have to do this in 4K, but I don't know. We'll see what the quality looks like on this first initial video. And then, because I'm also going to do the command stand, and that's where I'm going to put the Confederate flag on my guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's racism. God. To a certain extent, this is how comfortable we are in America, the UK, and the rest of the Western world. We're so bored. We're so bored, so fat, lazy, overfed, that we got to invent things to bitch about. Whether or not it happened in Europe 400 years ago, 200 years ago, or 185 years ago in America, we got to invent things to bitch about. Personally, I think what we need to do is go through a starving time in the Western world where there just isn't enough food, where everybody is literally eating 
the calorie equivalent of one Big Mac a day. That's it. You're getting like, what, 700 calories a day. And then if there are extra calories, you're giving those calories to your children. I think, I think that would really help us out here in the Western world to experience a mild starvation. And I really hope that that happens. Just a mild starvation where adults, in order to keep their children fed, lose weight. Like tons of weight. That would slim us down and shut us up. That's what we need in America. A starving time. A time of famine. Alright, the cuffs are done. We're going to select a couple of these guys. Let's give two of them blue pants, huh? Switch to a bigger brush. I'm going to give two of them some blue pants. I stole them from, the re from them damn Yankees. I do declare we're going to steal pants from the Yankees today. That way we don't have to go around crotchless. And uh, we'll just do two guys together, him and him. They'll have blue pants. And them Yankee pants fit rather good, I do declare. Another interesting thing that I noticed about TV in the 90s, in the late 90s, le, le, early 90s and late 80s, is that the Golden Girls were set in Florida. The Andy, Griff, uh, Andy Griffith had his show Matlock, which was set in Georgia. And Carol O'Connor had In the Heat of the Night, which was set in Mississippi. All, all four of those great, all three of those great shows uh, took place in the South. And then Angela Lansbury with Murder, She Wrote, would often travel to the South from the North. Kind of a weird little dichotomy there. I don't know if it was coincidence or that's just where those actors were living in that time frame, you know, because when you get old, you start to hate the cold and uh, you, you want to live where there's no winter. Or if there is winter, uh, the winter is literally like, oh, the average winter temperature is 50 degrees. When we have record-breaking cold, it's, it's like it drops down to the 30s. And then you go into spring or the rainy season. And then you go into boob sweat weather. And then you go into no ass is ever dry weather. All right. So we did up those pants. Take a look. You have to take a look from the, these guys all the time at profile to make sure you got the pant legs. And if you want to go by a little bit faster for this stuff, you could just leave the uniforms all gray. It doesn't matter. I like a little bit of color in there. The next phase are the rifle stocks themselves, and then we'll have accoutrement, which are knife holsters and everything. We're going to be putting a little bit of brown in here. And of course, it looks like it's all clogged up. That never happens. I use this color so much. It never clogs. Here it comes. Oh no. The sucker's still loaded. I hate these kind of. I wish they would just bring back the old Citadel pots. I really do. It's always blue. We're going to wet that down. And we're going to get started on the guns. Now the guns, they're a little bit tricky because they're they're literally traveling right next to the faces and hats of these guys. And uh, the worst problem, this is another design flaw on these things, is that they're shouldered arms differently. Sometimes the barrel's in back, sometimes the barrel's in front. Why couldn't all the barrels just be in front? And uh, that way you could have just gone down one side of the gun, up one side of the gun with two different colors, and you would have been done. But no, I've got to rotate the figure in every single direction. So it's almost like, why don't you just get some thin brown on your paint, on your paintbrush, and uh, go to town on the gun barrels with the brown. And then pick out the silver later. like I'm about to. 
And I am using a bigger brush for this because you, you really want to kind of get through it. These things seem to be selling like hotcakes for Warlords, so I'm glad they're making a little bit of money. There's going to be an event at my local game store, a Warlord Games Day, so I'll I'll show up to that. I'll show up to that, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Me, me and uh, the Ranger were talking about it last night. Might be fun. It might be fun, but you still gotta mask up. You gotta mask up in public gatherings. No, the store wants you to mask up, which I think is still bullshit. You know, I got a story about masking and the homeless population. Okay, if this disease, if coronavirus were so deadly, why aren't the homeless people dying in record numbers? Now, I was at work the other day, as I go to work every day, and I saw these two fat as shit homeless people. I mean, this is how good we have it in America. All of our homeless people, they aren't missing any meals. Every single one of them is fat as shit. These two fat, like, I think one of them was a girl. I don't know. Uh, they talked and chatted for about 15 minutes, and then they went inside a tent. That tent jiggled. It jiggled around for like 20 minutes, and then one of them came out with a syringe, injected it into, it, into his or its arm. I couldn't tell um, because they were both so ugly. They were both so ugly, both so, like, all right? So there was an exchange of sexual favors an exchange of fluid and then one of them walked out and injected themselves with a needle i'm going to suggest i'm going to say that the contents of the needle were heroin and then he walked up and then he or she staggered off after uh this sexual exchange uh and uh that that was the end of it and I'm sitting there, like, thinking just how dirty, how many jer And there was no mask involved. They weren't masking. Um, just how dirty those conditions are. And I'm like, why aren't we scraping these people off the street? If coronavirus is really that deadly, why aren't the, ho why aren't the homeless people dying in record numbers? Which would do us all a favor. Because then we don't have to pay money to the homeless shelter. I mean, it was a self-correct... <laughs> homeless people, it turned into a... It turned into a godsend, you know. It killed enough of them that it was just a self-correcting problem with coronavirus there. But nope, nope. There was a huge old exchange of fluids and drugs and dirty needles. And uh, the person walked away just fine. There you go. That's my take on coronavirus at this point. If it were really that deadly, homeless people would be getting the brunt of all the deaths. We, As a matter of fact, California, New York, Chicago wouldn't have problems with the homeless anymore. Ugh. That's gross. They were both fat as shit. You couldn't tell who. And that's the pro that's another th problem with the with America. You know, you go to certain parts of the country. You know, everybody's so fat you can't tell who's who. You know. guns all right so yeah sometimes you might want to just paint the entire thing the only time I see homeless people wearing masks masking up is when they're frickin' panhandling. And I don't give to panhandlers anymore. I'm kind of done. Every now and then I will. And, uh... You, you can tell when somebody's actually homeless. You look at their shoes. If the shoes are good, that person's not homeless. If, uh... M most of the time, unless... They, I mean, I don't know. I, I, 
I really think that the quality of people has really dropped. And, um, you know, you see people out there panhandling and they're a brand new pair of shoes. And it's like, what, I'm not going to look at your shoes? You know, so it's like, okay, but that's the only time I see homeless people masking is when they're panhandling. But they're using dirty needles, you know, and it, it's all good. It's all good. It's water under the bridge. But you, me, us normies, us people who actually work for a living, pay our taxes, we have to wear masks. We have to wear masks because, you know, there's so many peer review studies out there that masks work. Again, why are there so many goddamn homeless people? I'll never know. The problem is just going to get worse because as Daddy Joe Bucks prints more money, there you go, money printer go burr, goes burr, it's a magic trick. All four presidents from Bush to, from Bush to now have print, had made money printer go burr, which they never should have done in the, in the first place. Never make money printer go burr, but, you know, money creates money, I guess, and if you can create money that creates more money, you'll be broadening the economy all the entire time, expanding it. There's no consequences. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is that I saw two homeless people allegedly have sex in a tent. For, and I don't control where my truck is parked when they're throwing material onto me from a dig out. Sometimes I just get an unlucky draw. But that tent shook for about 20 seconds and then there was an exchange of drugs and fluid and that was it. So the next color we're going to do real fast before we go to metal is uh, we're going to touch up our gray. We're going to get another little dot of flesh out just in case because we got to get some handy hands on there. And uh, we're going to do the hats and everything for these guys. Uh -oh, let's shake that up. Okay, you're kidding me, right? All right, never mind. We'll do it this way. And we're going to go for the pant legs on these guys real fast, the ones who have gray pants. And you notice how I kept all the ones who have gray pants together so that I can just hurry up and get them done. And this is the one time that the profile doesn't matter. You're just basically doing this as a highlight. Okay, you have a gray hat. So we're going to do your gray hat. And again, this is just... I think Panzer Gray with a mist of uniform gray works really well. It works really well. Quick easy and painless. I really like these model kits. Oh, this guy's got to have a gray hat. He's got a cap. Uh, there are slight variations. I believe the Union has more of the caps instead of like the cowboy hats. I don't know what those hats are actually called. I, I, I guess the 10 gal the gallon hats. You know, because back then in the 1800s, you never went outside without a hat. You, you know? Never went outside without a hat, and a lot of times Confederates would have to would have to show up with their own equipment. Pant legs, pant legs, lower butts. We're going to do the sleeves. And these guys come off the sprue really good. The only tricky thing to building these guys are the cannons. I found I had a little bit of trouble with the cannons. But I'm also going to paint the cannons so that you can see how they're done too. But there's really not much to these guys until they come out with cavalry. And uh, I have a feeling that's going to be really fun.
you want to go for the tops of the sleeves where you can see it because that's where the light's going to hit them or the back or big swaths of the back But I definitely recommend the gray primer. But you can do it either way with the dry brush or whatever. Oops. Oh. I thought I'd be a good highlight. Teeny tiny. Let's get a different brush out and finish off the gray highlights. And the cool the cool part about painting these is, is that it's just a touch, a touch, a touch, and a touch. You know? I gotta get caught up on my content for the other channel but I just you know I don't have the time and I can make these painting videos and I really want to get all the bugs sorted out so I can get to a permanent setup and get this stuff out of my my uh, playing space once and for all God, there's so much work to do but uh, a patron asked me if I had dealt with any other figures that weren't 28 and here I am because I was already going to do this, and I said, well, I'll put these into video format for you. And if you were following me on Instagram, you would know that I had already, uh, that these videos were coming. It's only bench updates only. I don't really say much because I don't have, I don't really have the time to devote to it. This is just, it's just, here's what I painted. There it is. Isn't that fun? And then, uh, you know, I, I try to respond to people. I have to get on my PC to respond to people because my phone, to, my phone is on the fritz. My phone's like 50 years old. I have a Galaxy 7 still. Because I don't like to spend money. Spending money is like kryptonite to me. Okay. I think we're at a good point on those. Now they're starting to look like soldiers. All right, we will do some metal and some accoutrement next. Okay, we're back. Let's do the uh, gun barrels and the metal for these guys. And uh, every now and then you'll see a knife handle on these guys, like right there. Oh, we're going to do that. They've got little metal belt buckles. Guy's got a knife handle. We'll do that too. say that the gun barrels were a pile of crap because sometimes they go right down the wrong side of the miniature and they go right towards the face. Some of these. So you want to use a very, 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 very thin, thin glide-on metallic because it's just a line. The gun barrels are all just a little bit of a line, and you don't want to use something like 
uh, lead belcher because it's just too dry and it's really hard to keep watered down. It is for me at least. I don't know about you. Now you can make the belt buckles brass if you want to, if you're determined. Um, changing another metallic on something this small and doing that detail, that one little detail, eh, it isn't going to matter. Eh. These guys are just little. triggers on some of these that you got to get. There we go. Bam. And now we have to turn them around and do it all over again because their barrels aren't uniform. God, why can't all the barrels just face one way? You know, you're going to have all this slight variation in what you do here. model around, break your wrist just making sure that you get all the barrels. But again, you want the you want this stuff to glide on. And if you want, you can make some of these uh, canteens metal as well. It wouldn't be beyond the uh, ordinary for a guy to have a uh, tin can for a canteen or something. A tin drinking vessel. You can re really get these guys cranked out. I think I can do one stand. When I'm not doing instruction on how to do this, I think I can do one stand of these guys in about 45 minutes. So one stick, 45 minutes, which really works out great if you want to do a little bit of painting every single night. You can do uh, 45 minutes a night, and you'd have, and then all you have to do is uh, finish the com the commander and the cannon on the weekend and then you base everyone and you're all done. I'm going to say that's the end of my gun barrels almost. There we go. That's the end of the gun barrels. It's the easy part. So I'm going to be working on this whole uh, next set because I've already got one regiment done and it's uh, three regiments, five bases and that's a brigade. And then you also get three cannon, which is fun too. The next color we're going to deal with is leather brown. And this is for like the haversacks, the supply sacks that they've got on the back of their, of their persons and everything. And then uh, we're going to keep, I, I like the air, the air color because it stays wet for quite a little while. 
And we got this, these like haversacks right here. I'm gonna make those brown, just for a little bit of color. Knife, uh, what do you call that? You got a knife, scabbard. Another canteen, and you can make the side of those canteens uh, a steel color, which I will do to, to them as well. And then, oh, I also do the gun holsters. Some of these guys have gun holsters and other equipment. Knife scabbard right there. A huge holster and another little sack right there. scabbard, another little leather pouch, another knife scabbard, a canteen. Just to give these guys some color. Another little holster. And even if you miss a couple canteens or holsters here and there, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. These guys are so small. And uh, you don't have to put the same amount of detail into the back rank. All right, we're going to need a little bit of metal. Because we still got a little a belt buckles that we missed here. This guy's got a buckle on his belt. Another buckle down here. Boom. This guy's got a knife scabbard. Good, good. And let's do this up in ten. Right there. Bam. His knife. His knife handle can be metal too. Do the side of that up in ten. canteens and then all right we are basically to the wash phase there's one little speck of blue that I need to fix and that's it have any left? Oh, I, I have just enough to do that. All right, let's paint his pant leg real quick. There we go. And he is done. And that is what they look like. Get that up there close to you. And we are going to use probably four drops of wash. I want these dark. Four, uh, better do five, better do five, and then we're going to put two drops of water in it, two, and then uh, when I'm done shaking these off into the trash can, I just sort of let them hang like that, and uh, I'm going to use this one, and we're just going to go to town all across them, right here. La, 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 like a kindergartner. Ha ha ha, I paint these guys. This darkens them up. This also gets into the crevices, provides a good shade. I mean, you do whatever you want, but I don't want to be painting these guys. 
intimately like I would a 28 millimeter model. And th that's another good advantage of these is that they don't require a commitment. You know, you don't have to be a commitment hobbyist. But I'm hoping me and my dad can play a little bit of black powder. It's not like I do anything with the guy. He's as reclusive as he's ever been. Plus, you can play this game. Uh, uh, the advantage is, I, you know, I can take an entire game uh, game table, four by four game mat with me. Not to mention, I can uh, take the terrain with me, and I, you know, I can play it absolutely anywhere, absolutely anywhere. So I don't know how big this collection will get. It depends on how much I like playing the game. You know, I might do a br three brigades of each. Who knows? Brigade of Cavalry for each Union and Confederate, Brigade, uh, two Brigades of Infantry, just, who knows? Pro I probably don't want to go for more than, uh, what do you call it, playing this game on a 4x4, four four, and that's what I want to keep it. Splatter, get that splatter. All right, the only thing left for me to do is to shake this off into the trash can. And uh, we'll uh, come back in just a second. So let's get wrapped up here. Uh, this is what your cannon's going to look like. Very easy and everything. And I didn't have much trouble with that. And uh, I'm going to take you for a on a tutorial for that. I'm also going to do the command stick and how that needs to be done and everything. There they are, the little Confederate flags. Ah, no, it's offensive. What am I going to do? Oh, no. And here's what a standard uh, base looks like. Now, you can paint them this way, or you can slack on the details for the back row. It won't matter. But as you can see, you know, you're going to be looking at these guys basically like that the entire time, you know. But there you go. And uh, I hope this helps. Uh, here is the commander for one regiment. There you go. Nothing spectacular. And uh, just real easy. So that's what I did. I'll also be showing you how I base them and everything. There's just texture paint and static rest. But that's basically it for this lesson. When we do it again, we'll, do, we'll be doing the command stand. How to paint the command stand because it's a little different. And uh, we're going to be painting the commander and the cannon. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video. Um, and until I see you again, keep painting and stay metal, my friends. I'm more of an expert at uh, exposing the moon. <laughs> I, Get out of the telescope! <laughs> <laughs> see if you can find uh, the one crater. <laughs>